the rules of the house. Amen. 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 Making up something and doing your own thing when you already know how it go. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I told my husband this morning, I said, baby, I only have 30 minutes. He said, that's enough. Amen. I said, okay, it'll be enough. But you know, God is so good. Who wouldn't serve a God? Amen. Hallelujah. When the worship service this morning was awesome. I felt like I wanted to just fly around the room. But who wouldn't serve a God that we serve? Who wouldn't worship him? Who wouldn't just serve him with all your heart? Who wouldn't love him? Praise God. When we think about the goodness of God, when we look back and think about the things that he's brought us through. Hallelujah. The song says, when I think about the goodness of God, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's not about man this morning, but it's about God and God alone. Hallelujah. It's about following the spirit of God. It's about moving with the spirit of God. It's about exalting the God we serve. Our life, hallelujah, means nothing without God. Hallelujah. No accomplishment, no degree. Glory to God. Nothing that we have achieved matches up to our life in God. It's only what we do for Christ that matters. Hallelujah. So I feel blessed this morning. I thank God for the opportunity. I thank God for Pastor Amar and Pastor Butrus. And each and every one of the ministers in their respective places, this is a powerful church. My husband says, you don't have to keep saying it, but I got to say it. Because it don't have to be the way it is in DLA. But we're grateful to be here. We're grateful to be in your midst. And you are beautiful people. You know, God made some pretty brown people. Oh. <laughs> I mean, when he made brown people, he just said, that's it. That's it. <laughs> all shades, all arrays, all, all textures, all height, width. He, just, he said, that's just enough. He said, it is finished. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God. So we're going to pray. Father, I ask that you would move by your spirit. Oh, God, I ask that you would even now come in the room, God. Holy Spirit, move in this room, move in this message, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as I decrease, I ask that you would increase in me. Glorify yourself in me, God. Hallelujah. As we stand before your people, speak through the vessel in the name of Jesus. And we give your name the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. I'm going to ask them to put up a, uh, start putting up my slides, please. I want to tell you that last year, the Lord gave me a word for this church. And uh, when Pastor, how many of you were here the first Sunday of January of the year when Pastor prophesied that this was going to be a year of full restoration? He said it was going to be a, 2019 was going to be a year of full restoration. So when I heard Pastor say that, I said, that sounds familiar. And I went and I went and looked through all my notebooks. God gives me prophetic words. You know, all the, all the time. And I knew that I had a word for DLA concerning restoration. But I couldn't find it. And it puzzled me that I couldn't find it. I think it was two or three Sundays. And I said, I got that word. I just don't know where it is. And I want you to know, after Pastor told me that I would be preaching on the third uh, Sunday of the month, and I saw God, God, what would you have me to say? And he brought back to my remembrance the word on restoration. So I finally, I went through all my notebooks, page by page, and I finally found this word. And I want to tell you, this word is entitled Restoration Confirmation. Then the prophecy was received at 2.50 a.m. on Tuesday, January the 30th, 2018. Now, Pastor Minister 2019 is going to be the year of restoration on January 1, 2019. So almost a whole year went by when I was not able to find this word. But it was the timing of God, you see. God has a specific timing that he wants to release a word in the midst where it's going to have more impact. So if I had found it earlier and released it earlier, it would not have been in the timing of God. So when I heard this word, I said, God, you know, this is amazing. This is you. 
It's not amazing. It's you. That's how the spirit moves. And so when the Lord gave me this word, and I remember what Pastor was saying, I went in and typed it out. And I'm going to read it to you before we get into the message. Before we get into the message, ushered in the spirit of restoration through prayer, praise, worship, and oneness. That's the message that the Lord gave me. But I'm going to read this. It's not going to take too long. On two, at 2 50 in the morning on Tuesday, January 3rd, 2018, almost a year ago, the Lord says, I shall restore it. Talk about DLA. I shall restore it as at the first. In the book of Haggai, Haggai asked the question, Who of you remember this house in its first glory? And I want to ask you this morning, who of you remember? DLA in its first glory. Raise your hand if you were here. If you were here, who of you remember DLA when the flag? I've seen pictures of the flags of all the nations and the places packed out, and the spirit of God was moving and the Lord was blessing in 27 years. But God says, "I'm going to restore." Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That. Hallelujah. The enemy tried to destroy. Amen. I'm going to restore DLA. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to restore DLA. Hallelujah. And he said, Pastor Mark. And I remember when uh, Brother I Izzy, Matt Joshua, when he ministered to Pastor. I remember he uh, said there were three arrows that were aimed at pastor, but God had blocked those arrows in the area of finances and health, and I can't think of the third one. But he's told me about Pastor Mar. he said, and the prophet of God, meaning the preacher of God, he said, Pastor Mar is going to abound more and more. Yes. But once he sees this work flourishing again, he's going to feel invigorated, and his health is going to prove. And then he said, Pastor has suffered much. He said, he said, you have suffered much, Pastor. But then he said, now you must reign. Hallelujah. See, there's a crucified side and then there's the glory side. God said, now you enter into your glory season. Hallelujah. He's bringing you out of the things that the enemy wanted to snare you in, even with your health. He wanted to weigh you down and discourage you to the point where you didn't want to go on. But God says, you're like Zerubbabel. He said, the man that started the work, that laid the foundation, you fall, you got to finish it. Hallelujah. You ain't got to worry about no substitute. You got to finish it. Glory to God. Because God says there's an end time harvest coming. There's an end time harvest coming. And even the people, even some of you just come on Sundays. God said when the spirit of God begins to move in the place and manifest his glory. God said, you're going to have a, such a desire in your heart to be in the house of God that ain't nothing going to keep you hallelujah out of those seats. You're going to run to the house of God. Hallelujah. You're going to want to be in the presence of the Lord. You're going to want to be under this anointing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It was a few Sundays back. We had a powerful uh, service and the spirit of God was moving and people were coming to the altar. And the Lord laid on my heart. He said, tell my people if they come with an expectation, if they come with an expectation of what I want to do in the midst, hallelujah, then it won't be no problem. See, it's no problem. See, the enemy want to keep you from being in the midst. He want to keep you from your blessing. He want to keep you from your healing. He want to keep you from getting that up going up higher. In 2019, you got to be determined, I'm going up higher. I'm going to go deeper. I'm going to go wider so I can be stronger. The things that we're facing, you can't have no little 30-fold salvation to get through here. You can't even have a 60-fold salvation to get through here. The things that we're getting ready to go through in this earth, you got to have a whole armor on. you got to have all the God that you can get. 
Glory to God. Don't get me started. We talk about time. We hate to sit in church not realizing that that's where we need to be. Do you want the fire of God to come into place? I heard Pastor Watson preach. You preached on the fire of God on Friday during the prayer. And, and, and that stirred my soul because God had given me that same message. I said, man, man, preaching the same message God gave me on the fire of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And Pastor Watson said, I haven't seen a manifestation of the a fire of the Holy Ghost like that. And I, I told my husband, I said, we have. Because we came out of the Pentecostal church. I'm not saying that. I'm not a denominational person. I'm not a clothesline preacher. I don't care about your denomination. None of that. But let me tell you something. Back in the day, the fire of the Holy Ghost was a normal thing. Hallelujah. When you went to church, you went with expectation of the fire falling in the place. Hallelujah. I can remember coming to church and we had gone and come in late. And when we got to church, we had gone to another event at another church. And I hated, I used to hate to miss church. Because if you miss church, you didn't get your seat on the front row. You had to sit in the back. We had a revival pastor that lasted three months long, pastor. And I ain't talking about just on Sunday and Wednesday. That revival lasted every day. We came to church every day for three whole months. Three whole months. I'm talking about three months. And nobody complained about being in the house of God. Hallelujah. I had my front row seat. And everybody brought their tape recorder. And when that three-month revival ended, see, God sent an apostle to establish the work and he's, he preached three whole months and you couldn't find a seat in the place and I bring my CD player and get my tape and plug in plug in my tape recorder because the floods were just on the front of the church <laughs> and nobody better be in your seat when you got there but one day we had to go somewhere early that morning and when we got to church we had missed part of the service the fire had fallen. The saints were falling out of the church. The saints were falling out of the church. Holly, I looked at one sister's head. We were just going to a meeting one Sunday after church. I looked at her head and I was going behind her into the pastor's house. Fire was coming out of the woman's head. Hallelujah! The power of God was in the place. Hallelujah! During that season, Hallelujah! when God's people loved them, when God's people didn't mind, it wasn't about what you had on. Hallelujah! It was about what was on the inside of you. It wasn't about none of this stuff. It wasn't about none of this stuff that we're concerned about. Everybody just wanted God. Everybody wanted God. Everybody loved God. Everybody just lusted after God. It was like a lust of God. God, what you going to do now? Oh, talking about single. I was single at the time. And I hung with the single women. I didn't hang with no married women. I was single. But there was some Holy Ghost filled single women. And we would get on the phone. We wouldn't talk about no foolishness. We would talk about what is the Lord saying to you today? What kind of dream did God give you last night? Hallelujah. How's God moving? What is he telling you? How long we going to fast today? Hallelujah. When you've been praying, are you through with your consecration yet? We were in love with God. And I heard God the other day say, you are my beloved. Hallelujah. He not only said through Pastor Jerry, you are my beloved, but he said, I'm in love with you. But God says, if you, if, you just, if you just fall in love with me, if you go higher in 2019, if you dare to go deeper in 2019, I got something for you you ain't never seen. I seen people. There was a sister in the church. A man fell down dead at a gas station. That sister prayed and that man got up. I seen people get their teeth put back in. I seen sloppy trunks. No, I'm not, I'm not kidding. A brother had a tooth full. Filled with gold. God filled the brother's teeth with gold while we're in the midst of the service. I'm talking about miracles. They can happen when we don't want to court, when we believe God. I've seen people come into church, sloppy 
drunk. This man came in the church sloppy drunk, didn't know nothing about God. I saw that man get sober right at the altar. He got sober and got saved and got filled with the Holy Ghost. I see people run in the church after they hear a radio program and hear the word of God preached. One sister ran in the church, left her bed where she was shacking up with her boyfriend, heard the radio broadcast, ran, the church was over with. She ran to the altar and said, what must I do to be saved? Hallelujah. We prayed with the sister. Hallelujah. We prayed with her. She got saved. Got filled with the Holy Ghost. Started preaching the word of God. God restored her children. That she had lost for 10 years through the foster care system. God brought her husband back out of prison. Hallelujah. And she's still serving God today. And that's been 30 something years ago. Ushered in the spirit of restoration through prayer, praise, worship, and oneness. Prayer is the foundation. Prayer, hallelujah, unlocks the doors. Prayer, hallelujah, glory to God, changes things we always say. Prayer. We told her pray without ceasing. I pray about everything. I pray about what when I'm cooking, I pray. When I'm driving in my car, I dispatch angels to keep space between me and my, my vehicle and all other vehicles, obstacles, trajectories, and projectiles. Pray all the time. Pray without ceasing. Acknowledge the Lord. Hallelujah. Get in an attitude of prayer, an atmosphere of prayer. That's what our prayer week was all about. That God would usher in us into a new level. That God, hallelujah, would bring us into a new level at GLA so that he could restore us. Right. Hallelujah. And I believe he'll restore us back beyond the former glory. I believe he's got another glory for us. Hallelujah. You want to see the power of God restore. You want to see people get delivered. You want to see them get saved. You want to see them get healed. Hallelujah. You want to see salvation in the place. You want to see them filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence. You want to see power restored to the house of God. You want to see people walking under the anointing. You want to see people walking in prosperity. Hallelujah. You want to see another people coming forth. When we pray. Hallelujah. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. But you got to give him time. You got to be patient with him. You, you got to give him what he wants. You gotta give it to him. Amen. Pastor Jerry in our school of the prophets, we had a school of the prophets. Three hours. My husband said, How you how many people sit in that seat for three hours? They don't even move to go to the bathroom. I said, because of the anointing. Yeah. Hey God! It's because of the anointing! Of, hey God! Yeah. When the anointing arrests you, you forget about your natural. And you move in the supernatural realms. Hallelujah. God will arrest you. He'll arrest your bladder. He'll arrest that headache. He'll arrest everything that'll move you out of your seat. Because he got something he want to tell you. That you can't get it home. You can't get it in your bathroom. You can't get it on the telephone or the television. Glory to God. When we had our school, and I'm not boasting, I'm just telling you what God did. He did it by his power. Amen. Pastor Mark, the Lord told us, he said, make a pool. Now this was in a hotel room. He said, make a pool. And he said, when the people come in, if anybody that needs anything, put them in the pool. And by his spirit, he said, because it's not by might. No, my power is by my spirit, says the Lord in Zechariah. He said, make a pool. So we made the pool. We just spoke it for. This is a pool in the center of the room. We pulled all the chairs back. And all of us got in a circle. And, and we said, who needs prayer? Who needs healing? God said, bring them in the pool. And we sit them down in the middle of the room. My God. Hallelujah. We had a young lady come in there. She always stood in the back of the room. She was in so much pain. She could not sit down without pain. So she stood up for three hours. She stood up through every session. Finally, we got together and we put her in the pool. God took away every pain. One lady came in. She came in one time on crutches. I said, what happened to you? 
She said, I hurt my ankle. She said, I'm here. I'm here. She came in on crutches. God said, march around the room. So we started marching around the room and praising God. You talking about praising God. We started praising God, hallelujah, for the healing that he was going to manifest. I looked around and the sister had put one of the crutches down and was on one crutch. And she walking around the room on one crutch. And she just singing and praying. We just praising God. And she walking around on that one crutch. I looked around again. She had thrown that crutch away. And she walking around.
the, and the man of God gave us all a lesson to bring. Mine was on the tabernacle. Well, the tabernacle wasn't my thing. God knew it wasn't my thing. I, I, I never taught on the tabernacle. And so anyway, that was my assignment to teach on the tabernacle. I want you to know I got up there in my anointed self. <laughs> and I began to teach on, I thought I was going to teach on the tabernacle. I got up there and I said, that I wasn't prepared. But it wasn't what God had for me. And I had to tell him, this is not what God gave to me. And I do not have a word on the tabernacle. Somebody told me on Facebook the other day, I believe you a prophet. I looked at your Facebook page and I believe you got a word for me. I ain't gave brother a word yet. I don't intend to give him no word unless the God don't say it, I'm not going to say it. I'm not, I don't have to impress him. I work for God. Amen. Don't you work for him? Amen. You have to impress people. That's right, that's take, right. take the mask off. Amen. Take the mask off. Amen. This is not no competition. I don't have to compete with Pastor Jerry. What God gave Pastor Jerry? What God gave Pastor Mickey? What God gave Pastor Watson? I need the ministers in here. He gave that to them. Amen. What he gave Pastor Mark? I admire Pastor Mark's teaching. Why? Because the word just flows out of him. He and he's a walking uh, uh, concordance. Yeah. And, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, I admire that. I admire Pastor Watson's teaching. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Pastor Jerry. Pastor Jerry always wants you to do better. Do better. Come on, you can do better. <laughs> it's good. And Pastor Mickey is so dramatic. <laughs> Now, before God can do a thing, he, God told us that we had an open heaven. And so he's preparing us, Pastor Watson. He's preparing us to receive all of him. First he said we had an open heaven. Then he said we are his beloved. And that he was bringing us to another level. Then he said he used Pastor Watson to teach on the fire of the Holy Ghost. And the fire and the Holy Ghost began to move and people were laying out in the spirit. You really don't need to miss any of these services. You really don't need to miss any. Praise God. But in 2 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, I don't want to long the time. Second Chronicles. Chapter 7. Amen. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power might be of God. Amen. Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, talking about the glory of the Lord. Now, when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled the house. Now Solomon had built the temple that David was not allowed to build because of blood on David's hands. But he had set everything in order. And when God was pleased, when the prayer was made, and when you go back to 2 Chronicles, the 6th chapter, you'll see that uh, Solomon prayed everything. Really, 2 Chronicles 7, 14 is God's response to Solomon's prayer in 2 Chron Chronicles chapter 6. Yeah. But when everything was made in order, and I see God trying to bring more order. I see him putting people in strategic places in this place in DLA. So when... Solomon had made an end of praying. The fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering. In other words, it consumed the burnt offering. 
offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priests could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the house. When God's glory come in, the flesh has got to take a back seat. 